Uh, hello, my name is Matt Bach with Puget Systems, and uh, in this video I want to give a quick guide for how we recommend configuring your hard drives for Premiere Pro. If you want a more detail uh, on why we are making the re recommendations we are, uh, we have a very in-depth article available with all of the benchmark testing we perform that you are more than welcome to read. Uh, now optimally, you want to have at least two SSD or solid state drives in your workstation, uh, with three being the ideal. The first drive should be dedicated for your operating system and all of your programs, including Premiere Pro or if you're using After Effects or Photoshop. Uh, the second drive should have all of your project files and your source media. Even if you normally store these files on an external drive, uh, we highly recommend copying them to this internal secondary drive as it can greatly improve performance when importing media, uh, conforming audio, and generating peak files. Uh, in addition, for uh, many codecs, it will let you play back a much higher number of video streams live at the same time without needing to generate previews first. Uh, it can also slightly improve the time it takes to render previews and export video, so all in all it's just a great idea to do. If you can only afford two drives, uh, the secondary drive is also where you want to have all of your temporary files, including the media cache and scratch files. The main thing is really that you want to get the media cache files off of the OS drive, which is the uh, default for Premiere Pro. Uh, and simply moving them can make a huge difference in the time it takes to import media. Uh, we measured an average of about six times faster imports on average, and some codecs like H.264 were actually able to import 20 or even 30 times faster. So if there's any one thing you can do to improve your workflow, it really is just to get this media cache off of the OS drive onto some other drive. While it will not greatly improve performance for any single task, if possible, we actually recommend having the media cache and scratch files on their own dedicated drive. Uh, mostly this is because it makes it extremely easy to clean out all those temporary files when you no longer need them, and it also helps keep these expanding files from taking up space on your main project drive, which can you know, cause you to run out of space mid-project, which is you know, never a good thing. And if your budget allows for it, you might consider upgrading the uh, secondary drive with all your project files and source media to a faster NVMe drive or possibly even a RAID of normal SSDs. It won't give you a huge increase in performance for most tasks, but uh, conforming audio and generating peak files will be a little bit faster, and rendering previews will be a very tiny bit faster, like 2, maybe 3% faster. Uh, but if you need the absolute fastest speed in Premiere, uh, that is one thing you might consider doing is, is upgrading that secondary drive into an NVMe or RAID. So besides keeping your project files and source media on the secondary drive, in order to get your storage drives configured the way we recommend, there's really only two things you need to change in Premiere. Uh, the first is to change the location of the media cache. This is a global setting, so once you have it set, it will apply to any project you, ha you open or any new project that you create. And to move the media cache, uh, you have to have a project open, which we already have done here, and then you go to Edit, Preferences, and Media. And here you have two different things. You have the media cache files, and you have the media cache database. And both of these we want to relocate. And to do so, we just click on Browse, and then we go to the location of where we want to have them. Now in this setup we have three drives, so we're going to put them on the tertiary drive, which we have labeled here for cache and scratch. Uh, so we'll go in there, and then I'm actually going to go ahead and create a folder called Media Cache, and this is purely just for organizational purposes, uh, just because I like to have them you know, a little bit more organized. So once that's created, we'll go in there, and then we'll hit Select Folder. And we'll do exactly the same thing with the Media Cache, dat cache Database. We'll browse, go to Cache and Scratch, Media Cache, and Select Folder. And this will give you an extra little dialog box uh, asking you if you want to move your existing cache database to the new location, or if you just want to delete it. And if you have cache files that you still need, you can hit move, or in this case I'm just going to hit delete because I want to start from scratch. So hit delete, and then we can just click OK. And then if we go to the new location, we can look in there, and we'll see if we got the media cache folder, and then now we've got folders for the media cache and media cache files.
So setting the scratch location is a little bit annoying because it's actually a project based setting. Uh, so the media cache, uh, once you set it once, it applies to every project you create or every project you open. Uh, but the scratch location is per project. So if you are starting a new project, you'll have to change the scratch location. Um, or if you're opening an existing project, you might opt to change the location if it's something you're going to be doing a lot of work on. Uh, and to do so, um, there's two different ways depending on if it's a new project or an existing project. I'm going to start with showing you how to do it on a new project, and then I'll show you how to do it on an existing project. So on a new project, we just create a new project, call it, you know, whatever we want to. And then, you know, in addition to whatever other settings you might want to make while you're creating a new project, uh, we want to go to this second tab here called Scratch Disks. And in here, we need to change the location for all of these different Scratch files. Uh, to do so, we just hit Browse. Uh, we go to whatever location we want to have it in. And I'm again going to create a Scratch Files folder just for organization, just so everything is in one subfolder. It's easier to manage. Uh, we'll go in there, and then we will select folder. And we have to do this for each one of these. Now luckily, each time you hit Browse, it's going to default to that last location you are in. So you just have to hit Browse, and then select folder for all of them. And once that's done, we'll hit OK. And we have our new project with the scratch files in that, that custom location. Uh, if you want to change the scratch location on an existing project, all you have to do is go up to File, Project Settings, and then this uh, second one called Scratch Disks. Uh, in here, it's uh, pretty much the exact same thing as when you create a new project. You just hit Browse, go to your uh, new scratch location, uh, select folder, and do that for all of these ones. And once that's done, you just click OK. And then you, it's a good idea to save your project just to make sure that it uh, saves where it's saving those uh, new scratch files. Now if the media cache or scratch files start to get a little bit too large and you just want to clean them up, uh, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Uh, starting with the media cache, the first way you can do is you can go into Edit, Preferences, Media, same place we uh, changed the location of the, data, the media cache, and we can just hit Clean. And that will clean up your media cache. Uh, the other way you can do it is if you actually close uh, Premiere, and then open the File Explorer to the location of your media cache, you can go in there, just select all these folders, and just hit delete. And then the next time you launch Premiere, it will automatically recreate that folder structure just without those old cache files in there anymore. Uh, for deleting scratch files, uh, it's a little bit different. Uh, you can go either in each project, you can go to uh, Sequence and then Delete Render Files. And that will delete all of the, uh, you know, these scratch files. Uh, but the other way you can do it is you can again close Premiere, go to the scratch folder, select them all, and hit delete. And that will remove, you know, obviously all your scratch files. But the only downside is that the next time you launch one of the projects that had, uh, like, you know, video previews or audio previews, it will show an error here saying that it's missing all the preview files. Uh, in that case, you can just hit skip all and then again go to sequence and delete render files just so it doesn't look for those files anymore. Uh, so that's that's a way that you can clean up all the scratch files for projects that you no longer are working on at all um, and then you know if you happen to reopen one of those projects you can just you know s you skip uh, trying to find those files and then just delete them again from the project and then it won't look for them anymore. And that wraps up our guide to optimizing your storage for Premiere Pro. Uh, again, if you want to get more into why we suggest doing what we do, we have a very in-depth article that you're more than welcome to read. And if you're looking for more information on what hardware to use for Premiere Pro, or if you happen to be in the market for a new video editing workstation, uh, we highly encourage you to check out our Premiere Pro recommended systems. Not only do they, we have a number of workstations that are specifically designed for Premiere, we also publish the results of all of our Premiere Pro testing for the general public. So even if you build your own machine or for whatever reason you can't purchase one of our systems, we highly recommend giving that page a look. It's got a ton of extremely useful information. 
Uh, so that wraps it up, and thanks for watching this guide, and I hope it gave you all the information you need to make sure your storage is optimized for Premiere Pro.